Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I was MIA again, and that's because, as I said in my last videos, my computer stopped letting me edit my videos, so I had to do like that one take thing, and that was just not working out for me. That's a lot of pressure to put on yourself, so. Um, I waited and I just ordered a new laptop that I'll be getting in a few days and so hopefully I can start editing videos again. So, I'm filming! Yay! I have been reading a lot lately. 2020 is going really well for me. So, I thought I would just sit down and talk about a few of the recent reads that um, I really enjoyed and just chat and just get back into the swing of things. So, I have five here. Four of them are from Book of the Month. It just happened to be that way. I have read other books, um, but I just didn't enjoy as much. I will go in chronological order of when I read them and just talk a little bit about their plot and my thoughts on them. So first one I have is The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silver. So picked this one up. I usually never read books like this. Like the cover is just not what I usually go for, but I thought I would pick it up anyway. This one deals with a lot of loss as well, um, which I've been reading a lot of lately. It's not great. I've been reading a lot of sad books. But anyways, so this follows the life of Lydia Bird. She is engaged to a man named Freddie, and they're perfect and they're so happy. And then this unfortunate accident happens and Freddie passes away. For a while deals with how Lydia is trying to cope with this loss and then one night she goes to sleep and she's kind of transported into this other world where Freddie's alive, nothing bad ever happened, they're gonna get married and then she wakes up and is like whoa like what just happened um, and so she finds herself constantly like wanting to go back to this other life that she has and she's able to go through this other life because she's taking these like pills to help her sleep um, because of her depression. And so she kind of knows how to space out these pills so that she can go to this other life. So this kind of goes through her struggling between each world and kind of how to deal with that because that is so hard. That's even harder to me to just have to go through a loss, but then also having to go through this other world where you see what could have been like that is the worst um and so she kind of figures that out and is kind of dealing with how like how much time she spent in each world and gets caught up in that and so i won't go into the ending because i don't want to spoil anything but again this is just like a beautiful book about loss and it leaves you smiling like it hurts it hurts your heart to read about but in the end, you realize that, you know, the pain never goes away, but there are ways to be okay after a big loss like this. And I just think it was a really beautiful book and it was really creative and kind of fun to read. And I would highly recommend this. I gave this uh, four stars in Goodreads. So Two Lives of Lydia Bird uh, really surprised me and I thought it was a really, really well written book. So that's that one. Next, I wrote, uh, I wrote, <laughs> next I read The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes. I've been wanting to read this for so long, I, like I've heard so many good things about it. So this follows the story of a few main characters. It mainly follows the story of Alice, who lives in England, and then she meets an American, and they move on over and get married. And so this is set in Depression era, kind of, um, in Kentucky, in very rural Kentucky. And so she, you know, thinks of America as like New York City and then she's thrown into Kentucky. And so she's kind of struggling to find friends. Her husband is always really busy with his friends. And so she kind of hears about this traveling library. Of these few women who get on horseback every day and go on different routes through like the mountains and deliver books to people and families who couldn't get books any other way. So she's very interested and joins this little traveling library and meets some really amazing women along the way. Um, there's a lot of drama involved. The other main character's name is Marjorie and she is such a badass. I loved her. She's so independent and just like doesn't take any crap from anyone, which was kind of unheard of during this time. Like women were supposed to be just like cooks and do laundry and like that's it. But she 
knew that she deserved more and kind of made a life for her own. Um, yeah, there's a lot of drama that happens. I know, like, I can see why people loved it and, like, gave it five stars and it, like, did really well. Um, for me, I gave it four. I don't know. I just, I loved it. Like, I loved the female friendships in this book. I feel like I rarely read books with all these women as main characters and following their friendships and I loved that aspect of it but I don't know there were a few things that were like that would never happen I don't know but I gave it four I still really loved it I was hoping to give it five and I did for a while and then I kind of reflected on it and I was like I think I should give it four usually like I rate books and then it takes me like a week and then I'm like I'm gonna change that rating actually I don't know if you guys do that too, but I can't just like automatically write a book. Like I need to see how it affects me. So anyways, I'm rambling. But yeah, if you want like a really fast paced drama about female friendships, um, I would highly recommend this. And I loved the setting, like rural Kentucky was such a fun place to read about. So um, yeah, highly recommend this one. Next book I read was 12 Years a Slave, kind of changing it up on you by Solomon Northup. So really been wanting to read more about slavery and just get more educated on it. So I did pick this one up. So this is an autobiography, like he wrote about his life. So of course it follows, follows Solomon. He is a free man up in New York um and really successful and he has this wife and two kids and one day the wife and kids kind of go on this few couple week trip um for her to help out this family or something and so he's kind of walking around town and runs into these two men who are part of a circus and uh, he plays the violin and so they really want him to come and play the violin as part of this like traveling circus they offer him a lot of money so he says of course and goes off with them and they make it to Washington DC and then one night he is drugged and wakes up in shackles and so that is the start of his journey as being enslaved for 12 years. Ugh, I just, this was such a difficult read. I knew it would be going into it but I knew it was necessary. I knew I like needed to read this. Um, so he starts out like with a few different slave masters he is sold um, to go to Louisiana which I lived there for a few years and I recognize like a lot of the towns that they talked about again unreal he does have like a few nicer slave masters that he meets for a few years and then he's sold to like his main master that he's with for I think like 10 out of the 12 years and he is not such a nice man. Lives on this cotton plantation for a while and he makes an escape. He comes back and I just, yeah, it's really difficult to read. It really gets into a lot of the details of like everyday life. And eventually um, this nice man comes, he's from like Canada and so they're helping to build like this barn or something on the plantation and so he starts talking to Solomon and Solomon tells him like I'm actually a free man um they give him a different name um they give him anyways sorry I had to look up what name they gave him so they gave him the name Platt so to this Canadian he's like hey my name's not really Platt it's Solomon Northup like I'm a free man and so a letter is sent off a few men from New York come down and rescue him and take him out of slavery and it's just full of so much sorrow but again like so much hope and just the strength of these slaves at the time i just i yeah it left me speechless after i read this i watched the movie um which was also really difficult to watch i did leave out some parts from the book but i thought the acting in that movie was absolutely incredible it's just such an amazing story. I really recommend like everyone become familiar with this story and what Solomon went through. And it just gives such a good look into like the daily lives of what these slaves had to go through in the South. It's just horrendous and uh, really important to become familiar with. So highly, highly recommend this. I believe I gave this uh, four stars as well. It was incredible. 
Um, maybe I should give it five stars. I'm so bad at rating books. I can never tell if a book is like a four star or five star, but absolutely incredible, heartbreaking. You need to read this book. Next book I read was The Library of Legends by Janie Chang. First off, look at this book. Look how beautiful it is. So this is kind of historical fiction meets kind of fantasy, kind of magic. This follows our main character. I'm so bad with names, you guys. Like, I can't. Leanne. L-I-A-N. I should probably look up how to say that, but I always said Leanne in my brain, so. Uh, she is currently a student living in Nanking, which is kind of on the coast of China, the eastern coast. And they are being attacked by Japan. This is in the uh, beginning of World War II. And so they have to leave everything behind and go more inland, more west. So they're not so easily attacked by the Japanese. Which I just, you know, you hear so many things about other parts of World War II and I had no idea that like this actually happened. Like this is very much based on true events. Janie Chang, I believe like her grandpa had to make this journey. And so she wanted to write about it. Anyways, so she's with this convoy of students trekking thousands of miles inland. And with them, they are taking the Library of Legends, which is kind of a collection of books that talks about just everything cultural about China and just mythology and just all these fun stories that really means a lot to the culture of China. And of course there's like romance and drama thrown in and there are just these little hints of magic thrown in these mythological creatures and i thought it was so well done i watched a few interviews of uh, jamie chang talking about it and how she had to balance between like most readers don't know anything about you know these creatures and these figures um, that the Chinese have, which is very true. I knew nothing and so she kind of had to put those in and give enough detail But not too much and I think she did an amazing job There's like the sad parts about the war and then these creatures and this love triangle And it's so amazing. I kind of knew I would like it going into it It kind of reminded me of the water dancer, which is kind of historical fiction But then there's magical elements that are so well done I gave it five stars. It was absolutely amazing because I learned a lot about history, which is what I love, but it was, uh, it was such a fun story. Also really, really sad. Um, don't get me wrong, but they awaken these immortals and these guardian spirits. Spirits? These guardian spirits that travel with them on this journey. It's also a lot about family and like sacrificing for your family and trying to be reunited because of course it's all these like university age students going on this trek and they know nothing about where their family is it's you know the late 1930s you can't just like call up your family and see where they are so i cannot say enough good things about this book i would highly highly recommend it just completely transports you and i flew through it i love this book the last book I have to talk about is The Paris Hours by Alex George. This was the latest book that I've read and I added it to my all-time favorite collection because this book, y'all, can we talk about the writing? Can we talk about everything about this? Um, I may do a separate review on this book just by itself because I think it deserves that. So I'll just like quickly go into the synopsis and not really talk about any of the names or anything. So this follows four different characters, three men and one woman, all living in Paris. They're like not connected at all. You're, the whole book you're wondering like how they all come together in an orderly fashion. Talks about each character and like starts over and does this whole repetition thing. So it talks a little bit about each one's background, but mainly this book takes course over one day. So that's kind of why it's called The Paris Hours which I absolutely loved. Um, I haven't read like any books like that. Each life is so different from the next. It's so fast paced. It's kind of like a thriller. Like I just wanted to eat it up and get to the end as fast as I could. I read this in one sitting. It takes place kind of in like the back streets of Paris, streets and the places you never read about in Paris. This takes place in uh, 19, 
27 so right after World War One, or not right after but and this was an age of like huge arts coming up and writing and music all became very popular and it does follow like a few famous people but they're kind of like the backstory the back characters you really focus on these four characters who are just kind of like normal everyday humans it was really really fun to read about kind of the parts of Paris that no one talks about. Author Alex George did li live in Paris for a few years and so he wanted to talk about you know the everyday lives of like normal people because I feel like we read about all these famous places and people in Paris and not so much um, the other parts of it. So I loved that aspect. Again, it was so fast paced. It was so intricate. How everyone was intertwined was absolutely incredible. Like I sat there after reading it and I was like, how does someone write that? Like, oh my God, I could not recommend this book enough. Um, again, I think I'm gonna do like an individual book review on this because I cannot say enough good things. It was the best writing ever. It was so, so good. So highly recommend The Paris Hours. Um, it was definitely my favorite out of the past, out of these five books that I've talked about. Get your hands on it. You won't regret it. Amazing. Those are my five, um, some of my favorite books that I've read lately. And I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys are doing well. I know everything's crazy right now. Come back and see me. I uh, should be uploading videos pretty regularly. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.